Hello, I'm Dr. Rostenberg, and I want to personally thank you for checking out my YouTube channel. Stay tuned at the end of the video, and I will give my recipe for your healing process. Now, I wish we could achieve our results with just diet and lifestyle alone, but supplements really do make the difference. And to help you with that, you'll have an opportunity to order supplements at a discounted rate. We'll see you then. I'm bringing you some information that uh, I think is important for the community out here is trying to, you know, look at your genetics and understand more about your methylation cycle and how that affects your health. This whole short video is really geared towards looking at digestion and, you know, in my research, I, I, I certainly haven't read every article ever published, but I've seen a lot and spent a lot of time doing this. I haven't found that NTHFR by itself causes a, a gut problem. Um, but what I have found without a question is a huge relationship between methylation problems like MTHFR and gallbladder disease. And any of you, you know, the gallbladder disease is extremely common. It's still one of the top surgeries each year. So this is a problem that's really widespread and we need to do a better job taking care of these people. This research article I like because it, it just highlights you know, in essence what the problem is or where methylation really affects gallbladder. Basically what you're looking at here, the top where I'm wiggling the mouse back and forth, that's inside the liver. Down here is in the bile, bile ducts basically of the liver. These, these will eventually flow down into the gallbladder and be stored. Um, but you can see these genes, you know, this is SAMe, this is methionine synthase. Uh, you know, genes that people who look at their genetics and study methylation are familiar with and they're just, you know, absolutely present here in the liver and they have to be functional in order to, for the liver to produce bile. So this is just good evidence that the methylation cycle influences has a huge impact on how, how we make bile and therefore the health of our gallbladder. Um, another way to look at the genes, of course, is through a report. This one is from uh, Sterling's MTHFR report. And I've cut and pasted different genes so that I can see them here on one slide. But basically, you know, the genes that really infect gallbladder, this, this system right here, PEMT, BHMT, these are influential on how we make phosphatidylcholine. And, you, and you'll see throughout the video, you can't make bile. You can't move something fatty out of your body without choline. Um, and, and luckily our body makes a lot of choline, but that's only if our methylation cycle is really optimized. And then we go down from there, you can see the MTHFR genes. Uh, those are well known. Uh, less known, but still important, are the sulfation genes, glutathione-related pathways. This is glucuronidation, and this is, these are acetylation genes. So I don't wanna you know, overwhelm the audience here with all these big words, but just recognize that from this point down, all of these genes influence phase two detox. And your body is really incredible. It, it never makes mistakes and it's always adapting to environmental you know, situations. But if you have genes that slow down your sulfation problem or your pathway, excuse me, maybe you have an oxalate issue and your sulfate's even lower. Maybe you also have at the same time a methylation issue and your glutathione system is a little slowed. So you have, let's say you have those three things going on, glutathione slow, sulfation slow, and methylation slow. Well, that's a big, big challenge for detox. What your body's gonna do is it's gonna upregulate another system to make up for the ones that are slow. And the most common one that's upregulated is UGT. That, that means basically your liver is gonna glue glucose to, the, to your toxins in order to get rid of them. So. Um, we'll talk about that here as we go, but you'll see that gluing, detoxing your body using sugar is, is effective, but if you do it too much, it changes how your bile and your gallbladder works, and then you end up with a diseased uh, gallbladder and a problem with your digestion. Um, some more studies just indicating how important bile really is. It's phenomenally important. It is a detergent. Uh, that helps us break fats up in our diet so we can actually absorb them. I mean, most people I see, 95% have low vitamin D, low fat absorption, low fat soluble vitamins. Uh, this is a widespread problem, uh, poor bile function. It also impacts SIBO because just like, you know, the soap 
you use to clean your dishes rinses the fat and the bacteria off your plates so you have a clean plate. Well, the same thing happens in your gut. If you don't release bile, you cannot rinse the bacteria back down and so you're more likely to develop SIBO, um, which is being recognized as a much more common problem than we first thought. Another issue with bile is if you don't, you know, secrete it, uh, like we just talked about, you get leaky gut. So, you know, that's straight out of the research from 2011. Poor gallbladder function due to poor methylation equals a leaky gut. And here's your data and your picture on how that works. Um, you're just more likely to have these uh, cracks between your intestinal cells uh, when your gallbladder isn't, isn't work, working well. So I, I like to also kind of look at what the bile is actually made of. Uh, this is from the textbook of medical physiology, a really good resource. And basically what you see is, you know, once it's in the, you know, the gallbladder concentrates what the liver is getting rid of, okay? So the gallbladder is the trash can that holds on to and collects all this garbage. And, you know, if you empty that trash can three or four times a day, that trash can is pretty healthy. It's not going to get, you know, corroded and, and really yuck, disgusting. Uh, but if you stop emptying the trash can, uh, that the liver is you know putting trash into then you you will have a problem one way or the other you're going to develop a problem and it could all be related back to your untreated imbalanced methylation cycle uh, but you can see here that uh, there's a lot of water and bile uh, it's the main ingredient but then you get bile salts you get bilirubin cholesterol fatty acids and then you know a lot of other different salts um, you know, that's just kind of the dry academic side of it. When you look at the you know, what actually is in your bile, you've got a lot of heavy metals, a lot of drugs, uh, xenobiotics, things like, you know, uh, GMO food toxins, flame retardants, uh, preservatives. I mean, all kinds of garbage. Just think, think about how many things the liver does every day to keep us moving forward and keep us upright. Um, all that garbage that the liver is getting rid of, the vast majority of it goes into the bile. So we... we when we think about detox, you know, one of the huge parts about detoxification is just releasing bile when you eat. If you don't release bile, you don't get rid of xenobiotics, drugs, or heavy metals. So, uh, you know, you can do all the chelation and aggressive therapies you want, but, you know, fixing digestion uh, will help detoxification every day, and it's a lot more gentle on people. Um, so I'd just like to point that out. And I mentioned earlier that, you know, when the body's stressed, it's going to convert uh, or it's going to it's going to upregulate or increase one pathway if another pathway is slow so most of the time it's methylation and sulfur detox and glutathione that's not working great so the body's going to go back and say okay well i got enough blood sugar so i'm going to use that only problem is when you start like for example when you take estrogen and you glue it with sugar make make this glucuronidation reaction um it, it makes the bile really thick so you know this is one reason why people with methylation problems get gallbladder issues they can't their phase 2 detox is imbalanced so the body's forced it's an intelligent response but it's still forced to use sugar to try to get rid of things like estrogen the more estrogen you take maybe you're on birth control maybe you've um, had hormone replacement or just lived in an area that was estrogen toxic then that estrogen has to get removed and so the gallbladder's job gets even harder and there's even more uh, sugar used to detox and you know this is the diseased end result for a lot of people um, at this point the gallbladder probably uh, can't be saved but you know if you can there's signs that you can if you know what you're looking for you can find this problem very quickly and start to heal the gallbladder before this ever happens certainly something we see in our practice um, Again, here's a picture of molasses. So think about, so now you've got this person, this, you know, millions and millions of people out there with poor methylation, their sulfation isn't balanced, um, you know, they don't have good glutathione systems and some other phase two systems. And so the body says, all right, I'm going to use as much sugar as I have to absolutely need to, to try to detox this stuff. Well, molasses is pretty thick. I mean, I think everybody listening has probably seen it. Uh, you turn this bottle upside down and you got to wait a few seconds for this stuff to start flowing. Um, that's not true of dish soap, right? Dish soap is really runny. It's like, uh, you know, viscous, um, pretty, th pretty runny stuff. So your bile should be like dish soap, just like the detergent, um, you know, in your laundry room, just like the detergent you use to clean your dishes. That's what bile should be. When it turns into molasses, that's when we get problems. 
Now, interestingly, in this study, they, they produced this molasses-like bile, created this toxic effect in the, in the test subjects, in the mice, and then they gave them taurine. And taurine and sulfur uh, fixed it. So, you know, you give people who have gallbladder problems the right kind of nutrition, and, you know, taurine is one of those things, uh, you can see really big changes, and this is how it works. It just, taurine helps this molasses turn back into soap. It's a lot, a lot more fluid. A couple more, um, you know, just scientific references here to talk about choline. Uh, you know, again, choline, phosphatidylcholine removes uh, cholesterol from our body. So when you see people with high, you know, people with really thin and small frames who have like 300 on their cholesterol, um, you know, basically what's happening is the gallbladder just simply is not removing cholesterol from the body. It's the trash can is plugged like a cork in a wine bottle and the cholesterol just builds up. Um, so that's just a, a key, uh, something to pay attention to when you see your blood work. But if you give, um, you know, you support methylation, you get, you get these pathways working, then the body makes a lot more phosphatidylcholine and everything starts to flow. Um, sometimes doing gallbladder flushes helps that process along. Again, just more data. Basically, you know, uh, another nice thing about, pho about phosphatidylcholine is, it helps to protect the gut from bile. I mean, I mentioned earlier that you know, without bile, we get a leaky gut and we can have SIBO reaction, SIBO type problems. That's true, but bile is also kind of uh, agitating to living cells. Also, I mean, it can kind of like you know, you can you can scrub your hands with soap so much that you make them raw and they can crack and bleed, and you can do the same thing to your cells in your gut. The nice thing about phosphatidylcholine is it makes bile not aggressive or toxic to our own cells. So another um, benefit there. Um, yeah, so, you know, just another n negative consequence of this whole methylation mess, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there isn't really a gene that makes your digestion messed up. But if you have an imbalanced methylation and sulfation glutathione system, then your body's going to have to change the recipe it uses to make bile. And that creates problems. Um, SIBO is related to this, leaky gut. Um, fatty liver is also related to this. Um, when we start to run out of phosphatidylcholine, we can't get fat out of the liver. So we can't move. Phosphatidylcholine is real important for moving things that are fatty in watery compartments. So like your blood is watery compartment and you saw that bile was mostly water. Same, same thing. Without phosphatidylcholine, we, can't, we just simply can't move stuff from the liver into other areas of our body. We, can't, we don't have that kind of uh, economy in our, within ourselves. So methylation, guys, I mean, it's going to save gallbladders. It's going to save people from having SIBO. It's going to give people uh, you know, a healthier genetic expression. It's going to protect them against fatty liver. And those are just four things that I, you know, uh, talked to you about today. And as you continue to research and learn more about this, uh, I think you'll agree that methylation and looking at this work is uh, just pays huge dividends for people. So I hope this uh, short video was helpful. Uh, gallbladder problems are caused mainly, mainly, mainly by a methylation issue. I would say in closing that um, the gallbladder is based on my clinical experience and what I do with patients, um, it's the most sensitive and reliable indicator of a methylation problem internally, definitely. So all those people getting their gallbladders taken out and having gallbladder issues, it's just a, another type of symptom that comes from an imbalanced methylation pathway. And it doesn't have to be that way. There's things you can do to fix it. So check out the article and the links uh, that I provide on my website beyond MTHFR. You'll find protocols and just, you know, um, more in, some more in-depth information on this. Thank you so much for watching this video and sharing it with your friends and family. I personally believe, as I'm sure you do as well, that educating ourselves about what it truly means to be healthy is the only way we're going to change healthcare. I have created a website as a resource for you. To take advantage of this information, navigate to www.beyondmthfr.com and take a look around. In addition to blogs and articles I have written, you will find a tab on the menu labeled Protocols. It is a growing list of tools that I use in my office to help support my patients. 
You will find background information on common health conditions. You will find a detailed supplement protocol and you will find dietary advice to support the body's natural healing process. You will also have access to order recommended supplements at a discounted rate and have them shipped to your front door. I'm giving you the tools that I use and practice every day to help you overcome health challenges and live a happier, healthier life. I have done my best to give you that information and you will find it on these protocol pages. If you are looking for more help than simply what supplements should, should you take or what diet should you follow, I'm encouraging you, I'm inviting you to come to Boise and see me. Let me and my team and my staff take care of you. We have patients coming from all over the country and all over the area on a regular basis and there's room for you too. Now, if coming all this way to Boise is too big of a commitment, then please pick up the phone or email my office. We can work together from a distance.